so that was some wonderful worship, and I'm so glad that I was able to be a part of that fantastic job praise team. We recently completed a wonderful week of Vacation Bible School, and I am super excited to be able to be here with you guys this morning and share some of the highlights of the week with you. The slide behind me sums up the why of the children's ministry here at FBC. Our mission is to reach the children in the community, to raise them in the knowledge and the saving grace of Jesus Christ, and to release them into the next steps along their spiritual journey. Everything that is done within the children's ministry is intentional, and it's strategic, and it's done for one purpose, and that's to point children and families back to Christ. We all know that God's gift of salvation is free to all who will accept it. And we also know that he expects us to serve the church and to share the gospel with others. And Vacation Bible School is an amazing way for all of us to do both, to serve and to share. Each night during Vacation Bible School, the children's ministry averaged approximately 200 people here on campus, and that was just the children's ministry piece. And if you look around, you will see a number of bright yellow shirts sprinkled throughout the congregation. They have on these Rise Up t-shirts. Those people, they represent just a small portion of those who were actively involved in Vacation Bible School. And maybe you couldn't be here physically, but you were praying, or maybe you donated to the meals or to the crafts. Whatever your contribution was, I am eternally grateful for each of you. You are the heartbeat of the children's ministry. Over the years, you know, you can look back through history and many things change. But let me assure you that one thing hasn't changed, and that's the importance of Vacation Bible School. FBC recognizes the impact of Vacation Bible School and we are intentional about investing in the lives of children who need to know Jesus. One of the things that I've always found fascinating is that 85% of Christians say that they came to know Christ between the ages of 4 and 14. That is huge, guys. And during VBS this year, we had the joy of witnessing God's salvation just being outpoured in our first through our sixth graders. During the final night of the drama and the rotation skit, 21 children took their next steps in faith. 21. For some, that meant that that was their first time profession of faith. And for others, that meant that they came and they said, hey, I am ready to be baptized publicly. So we, we are just super grateful for all 21 of those lives that their names are now written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Everything about Vacation Bible School is geared for children, and it's a lot easier to let you see VBS than for me just to tell you about it. So let's take a look at this year's VBS, vacation, uh, VBS video and see how First Baptist Barmel took a walk on the wild side.
one thing that I hope that you all noticed, and it was something that Stephen and I noticed when we were working on that video. He said, look at the smiles on those children's faces. It was just a resounding thing that you see through that video are those smiles. And so I just want to share with you that it was a week of smiles and fun and laughter. But don't just take my word for it. We have a few children who want to come up and share the highlights of their Vacation Bible School week as well. So at this time, we've got Sam Kumar and Sarah Kumar and Jackson Bell. They're going to come up. Sarah is Sarah and Sam. Come on up here, guys. Sarah and Sam, they are the son and daughter of Sunil and Supriti Kumar. Sarah is finishing up first grade, and Sam is finishing up sixth grade. And Jackson Bell, of course, he is mine and Stevens, and he is finishing up the fourth grade. So they're going to share their Vacation Bible School highlights as well. Good morning. My name is Sarah, and, and my favorite thing about uh, Vacation Bible School was art and drama. And what I learned was that if you have faith and if you focus on God, you can do anything just like Peter walked on water. Thank you. This year I had a great time at VBS. My favorite part was the drama. The drama was really good and it was all about digging deeper in the word of God. My favorite part of the drama was when Mr. Winky dressed up like a vampire. I also loved learning about Jesus and him being baptized, even though he wouldn't have to be baptized because he was sin free. Thank you to all the adults who helped make VBS a great week and for helping me understand that being a Christian can be fun. Good morning, my name is Sam, and in VBS, my favorite portion was art, because in art, I learned how to paint, something that I wasn't really good at. I got better at painting now, but the most important thing about VBS was learning about God. Something that really stuck out to me was when Jesus was only 12 years old, just like me. He said, I came here to fulfill my Heavenly Father's plan. I want to follow in Jesus' footsteps. Thank you. Amen. Thank you guys, that was awesome. So from the mouths of babes, you hear it. They had a great week at Vacation Bible School. And not only just fun, but they learned about Jesus and they grew in their faith. So VBS is a week of sharing the gospel. It's a week of fun. And it's an outreach, a week of outreach to the community and to the church family. But it's also a week of missions. This year, the money donated by the children during the offering time was designated to fund the construction of a well that would provide fresh water to a village in India. Due to the persecution of Christians actually in that village, I'm not able to disclose the exact location, but we do have a few pictures to share. So the first picture that you see here that river is their current water source for this village. It is used for everything. In the picture, you can actually see a baptism taking place. In the second picture that we have, you can see a baptism in the forefront, and I can't actually see it on that. You can kind of see it in the background here, but there are actually people bathing in the river in the background of that picture. So the river that you see is that village's sole source of water for everything, for drinking, for bathing, for washing clothes, even for the animals to drink from. And the final picture that we have is a picture of some of the children from India that actually live in this village. These are the faces of the children from India that our children from First Baptist will be impacting for Christ because I am so excited to be able to share with you this morning that the offering collected will completely cover the cost of a well that will not only provide clean drinking water, but it will also provide a source of living water to the people of that village. The well... The well will be placed near the pastor's home, and when people come to collect fresh water, the gospel of Christ will be shared. So Ray Popham is our liaison for this mission in India, and his direct words to me, and I quote, they were, Dana, the creation of this well is going to be a huge help 
for the village and for evangelism. I, am, I can't tell you how proud I am of each of you as a church family, of our children, and of being able to share this morning of what a mighty outpouring of God's love and God's miraculous works that we actually saw during VBS. I want you to remember that in the end, each of us here have one purpose, and that purpose is Jesus. Jeremy. Good morning. So um, I was asked to uh, kind of recap VBS for the youth, and you've seen some of the pictures in there. This is the first year in a while that um, I remember uh, Barmel First Baptist doing uh, youth VBS. So, uh, of course, I didn't know what to expect, along with uh, I had also not planned budget for VBS youth. So um, I didn't know uh, really what was going to happen, uh, but we uh, advertised, told our youth about it on Monday night. Um, we had 24 youth uh, the very first night, and um, it, was, it was really good. We used the same Bible study that the students did, and I had a couple of adults uh, to say, hey, I didn't realize the kids and the youth were doing the same thing, but we, uh, we did the exact same Bible study. Uh, we just did it in the merge, and uh, we played a lot of games, had a lot of fun, or I did. I don't know about the youth, so I have to ask them, but uh, it was a lot of fun, high energy, a uh, really good week. So Tuesday, I decided we would take our uh, Bible study on the road. We had a group of 24, and what a great time just to kind of get to know them. And I uh, said, hey, y'all bring some money. We're going to go get ice cream at McDonald's and uh, do our Bible study on the, on the grass out there. So um, 34 showed up. We only had seats for 30, so we had to uh, recruit a uh, volunteer to drive, which was no problem. It's a good problem to have. So uh, we went and got ice cream and um, used the nice lawn area at First Citizens Bank and did our Bible study, played a few games, had a really good time. And then on Wednesday night, we have been having worship, so again, I was wondering how many is going to come. <laughs> so um, we had planned on uh, feeding them because on Wednesday night, um, we normally have pizza before service. So um, we recycled the hot dogs that we had on Monday night at VBS, and we had hot dogs Wednesday night for the youth. And uh, we ended up with 47 youth on Wednesday night and uh, had, a, had a really good night. <clears throat> and then uh, I told them, I said, on Thursday, uh, somebody donated a, a nice large tarp for us. It's probably as close to the size of the sanctuary square foot wise. I said, we're going to uh, make a slip and slide out of that. So wear shorts and a shirt that you can get wet in and we can have a really good time. And um, so June in South Carolina and the high was 76 degrees that day. <laughs> so we had to regroup with that plan on Thursday. So um, we, we, norm we just played some in inside games and uh, did our Bible study then. And um, I told them, I said, well, we'll do it on Friday. So um, on Friday, of course, I mentioned at the very beginning that I didn't have any VBS budget. And Dana called me early in the week and said, um, we're going to do inflatables for the small um, kids. Would you like to get one for the youth? I said, well, if he cuts us a really good deal, I said, I, you know, I probably could find somewhere to pull a little bit of money from. She said, well, what's a good deal? I said, maybe $200, something like that I could, I could spend. And we got online and looked, and everything for youth age appropriate was $400 to rent. I said, no, we're just going to use our tarp that we have, and um, we'll have some good redneck fun. <laughs> So, so um, I said, I can go get some uh, Dawn and we'll just use it this year. <clears throat> no lie, I pulled up Friday morning to the merge to uh, start my day. And there is a water slide, slip and slide pool combination set up already behind the merge, ready to go. And I said, praise the Lord. <laughs> Who put it there? <laughs> and why is it there? So, uh made my way back there, and the CDC does different events during the week, and they had uh, rented the water slide uh, for Friday for the CDC, so I made a phone call to Tori. I said, Tori, do you think um, we could extend the hours on this uh, water slide? So uh, she said, I'll call and check. So the guy agreed to pick it up at 8 o'clock. So uh, God provided us a, a water slide, a fun night, and uh, it went really well. And um, I said, even though I didn't have budget for it, God provided. And uh, we had a really good time. 
but uh, that was on Friday. Thursday night, the most important thing about Bible school, um, I was able to build relationships with these kids that a lot of times just on Wednesday nights you don't have time to do. And um, we presented the gospel, of course, on um, Thursday night. We had three to respond. Uh, one taking the next step of um, getting baptized, and the other two are salvation, and I still have to follow up with them. So um, praise the Lord. <clears throat> so I am um, I'm looking forward to Vacation Bible School next year and, um, and what the Lord does. Thank you. If you were part of Vacation Bible School, would you please stand? You deserve much more than just standing up and getting a round of applause. But that's all you're going to get. <laughs> but here's the thing. From the bottom of my heart, Dana's heart and Jeremy's heart, thank you. We couldn't do it without you. We love you, we appreciate you, and in 12 months, we're going to do it again. Amen? <laughs> <clears throat> I do have something I want to say this morning, but before I get started, I want to make sure that we recognize at least Dana and Jeremy this morning, if you two would please stand. I want you to know that so many people all the time pastor this, pastor this, pastor this, and I can't say it enough. It, it, it's not me. And I know y'all going to agree. It, oh, it's not us either, Pastor. But y'all were awesome. Y'all were just fantastic. And I love y'all with all my heart. And if there's ever anything that my wife can do for you. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You know, you know I love you and I support you. And if ever anything, and, and I got some great news I want to tell y'all about. Next year at Vacation Bible School, your first I'm telling you in the church, we're going to have adult Vacation Bible School. <laughs> and I'm going to lead that. And I'm hoping that the parents who drop off their kids will stay and everything that I'm going to be teaching on our marriage retreats that I do with y'all, I'm going to be teaching to the parents that come while y'all bless their children. So Dana, I need a space. <laughs> okay? But on behalf of myself and this church, we love you tremendously and thank you with all our hearts. Amen? Yeah. This morning we're going to be in Psalms 127. Yes, I do see the clock and I promise you I am prepared this morning for the time but we're going to be in Psalms 127, verses 3 through 5. And I'm going to ask that we would understand exactly what God would have us to see as we do this. Why do we put, and let me tell you something, there's no shortage of funds. Why do we put thousands and thousands of dollars towards children and youth? Why is it so important? If you would please stand as we read God's word. In Psalms 127, verses 3 through 5, Psalms 127, 3 through 5, God speaks and says to us through his scripture and his divine word, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. Lord, as we move forward to this morning, Lord, let us honor you with our minds. Let us honor you with our thoughts and our ambitions. Lord, let us always have a desire in our heart to seek you first and none other. And Lord, I pray that while we spend this time in your word this morning, we would have a better understanding, standing in a grasp of exactly what is expected of each of us as parents, Lord, as each of us as grandparents, Lord, as examples of Christ, to those who are in this pew today and of your church, we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. 
we understand that when we look at this, exactly what is the ability of 161 Allen Street, Barnwell, South Carolina? What is expected of this address? Why did God ordain so many uh, hundreds of years ago that this land, whether it was right down the road, whether it was right over there where the cemetery is, no matter where the church was placed, what did God expect of us? Why does he so, say, behold, children are uh, our heritage? So we understand that the legacy, meaning here in heritage, transcribed, it's what we leave behind. You are leaving behind the legacy of God and your work through him, through the children, just like this church is. The legacy of this church, 200, 300 years from now, will be how well we as adults today train them up in the homes and in the church. What kind of legacy are we leaving behind? Barnwell will ask you this. Do we expect Barnwell First Baptist Church to be doing the same thing we're doing now 300 years from now with the way we're conducting church with what God has given. It takes each and every one of us. It takes trust. It takes devotion. It takes sacrifice. What does that mean? We got to trust in the Lord and in our hearts. We have to devote ourselves to Him daily. For some, it seems like sacrifice is fine nine months out of the year. But June, July, and August, attendance decreases. Giving decreases. Help vanishes. We need to understand that God has called us to work in every aspect of the church today. If we expect this heritage, this legacy to leave behind, it says the fruit of the womb is a reward like arrows in the hand of a warrior, a soldier, a fighter. That's what we are. We're soldiers. We're fighters for the name of God. We have armor that God has told us in his own holy word that we can put on every day and adorn ourselves to not only protect ourselves, but to go forwardly into, forward into the world with our swords drawn and slay with the love of Christ. Slay being here, please understand. Caring, giving, understanding, serving. You want to win someone to Christ. We don't accept everything in their lives that they're doing that is sinful for their Christ, but we do accept them with the love of Christ. Our shirts say rise up. But if we expect this church to rise up, we're going to have to make sure that we continue raising up the youth in the way God would have us to do it. We look at this and it says, Blessed is the man who fills with a full quiver. A quiver is a container for holding arrows. An effective arrow must be let go. But how are you going to let go an arrow if it is not being shaped to where it needs to be? Do we just go out here to the trees? We just pull off a limb and say, oh, and put it in the arrow and shoot it? Is it going to be crooked? Is it going to be straight? No, there are things of an arrow that have to be done in such a way for it to go straight, for it to be used effectively. There's four parts. You have the shaft. It's the spine of the arrow. It's the strength of the arrow. Our children will be our arrows that we send out into this world. It started with 24 decisions in Christ at BBS just this past week. In this past year, Barnwell First Baptist Church, now listen, if you're getting ready for this, listen, has seen over 200 salvations in 12 months. 200 salvations, 200 arrows. Why? Because the shaft that they are being born in, God's word was given to them in such a way that they accepted God's word. They were willing to say, I believe. They were willing to rise up. Youth, adults, and seniors. But if they're going to have to rise up, we're going to have to raise them up right. So we give the shaft, and it has to have strength. And the strength of the shaft 
the backbone, the spine is God's word. But it doesn't just go if you have a straight stick. There has to be fletching. The feathers on an arrow, they help it fly straight. What is the fletching of this church? Well, we have discipleship and we have prayer. We teach them when someone comes to know Christ, you come to God through prayer. You speak to him through prayer. And he has an inaudible voice that comes into us and speaks to our soul, not through our ears, but directly to our hearts through prayer. And then we have people in this church, disciples. The people who come and discipleship through them, through VBS, through Sunday school class. But if they're ever going to understand what it means to fly straight, they're going to have to have a relationship with God, and that takes the Holy Spirit. And we got to understand the Holy Spirit keeps you on the straight and narrow of your life. It is the fletching of the arrow of God's Word. And the children don't know it if we aren't teaching it. In the homes as well as the church. Dana and Jeremy can't do it alone. I can't do it on 25 to 45 minutes worth of preaching on Sunday morning. It has to be done at home. It has to be done at home with what's in your cupboards, what's in your books, what's in your movies, and what's in your music, and most importantly, what's coming out of your mouth. If we expect our children, as my daddy would say, fly straight and ride right, it's done through the teaching of the elders of the church and the parents of the home. But then you have the important part, which is the arrowhead. It's the point of the arrow. It doesn't work if it's just blunt. It'll just pop right off. I expected that to be on. It's second service at will. But it does no good just to Hit the wall when we come. It's got to have a point. How do we mold that point? How do we get it strong? How do we teach our children to have an understanding? We do it through our VBS. We do it through our Sunday school classes. We do it through taking them on missions. They're never too young to go. We have a church mission trip coming up. Well, I've got children. That's great. We have a nursery for your children. Well, they're just going to sit there all day. But they're there. And they're learning at an important age that I don't know why I'm here, but I'm here. Because one day, these four, five, and six-year-olds will be 40, 50, and six-year-olds, and they'll be in the pulpit giving a testimony saying, well, my mom and dad, I'm almost 50. We don't talk like that. It's amazing how old it is, the older you get. 50 don't seem that long ago. But I remember when mom and dad took me on a mission trip to Kentucky, and I don't know what they were doing. I just saw them at lunch and breakfast. But, you know, I was there. And I learned that a long time ago at my church, at First Baptist Church Barnwell or Barnwell First or my home, whatever you want to label it, the missions were important. Children are arrows to do missions, not excuses to stay home. I didn't get no amens on that one. Children are never an excuse for us not to do the Lord's work. If we're going to have an arrowhead to be sharpened, it has to be stoned down, ground down into a point to be effective. So it will stick when they go and they spread God's word, not only through the gospel, but through their actions, through their thoughts, and through their lives. But, you know, there's something about an arrow. You can use it over and over and over again. But there's an important part on that arrow that you have to have to be able to use it over and over. It's called the notch. It's on the back end of an arrow, and it goes into the string of the bow. And if you don't have that notch where it can always come back to the string, where it can always come back home, where it can always be settled in to be aimed again, if you don't have the notch, it is absolutely worthless because it will not fly straight. It will not be strong. And no matter how good the fletching is, it will just drop to the ground. Boom. 
the arrows always have to be able to be used. Folks, we have discipleship. We have VBS. We have missions. We have phenomenal staff here. But the most important thing is mentorship. You don't have to be the parent of one of these children to be a mentor to them. Encourage them when you see them in public. You look nice today. I'm proud of you. Thank you for coming to church. Encourage them. Tell them you love them. Let them have a part in your life. When you see them out in public, when you see them in church, tell them it's nice to see you. As a matter of fact, adults, when you see each other in public and when you see each other at church, tell each other it's nice to see you. Why are so many people coming to First Baptist Church? Why are so many people joining this church? It's not because we're such great people. It's because our God is such a great God that works through us. And you know what the overwhelming thing that I keep hearing is, y'all were just so nice. It feels like home. Everybody like home. You're doing a great job. Keep it up. The legacy of this church is going to be well until God calls each and every one of us home. As long as we remember how important it is to make our arrows the best they can be. Folks, mentors stay in their lives and allow them to be held into position. The notch holds the arrow in position. But then you have the quiver. The quiver holds the arrows. Church, God has given us a beautiful quiver here. And each one of you, the children of God, no matter what the age today, is one of his arrows. One day God's going to pull you out of his quiver and he's going to shoot you somewhere. Are you going to fly straight? Or are you just going to go pew? See, there's many here today that don't know how to fly straight, but they want to. It's been a long time since they actually worked in the church. They understand the concept of what I've just preached. But they don't have it in their idea of how to get started. I'll tell you how you get started the same way we tell our children. You pray and then let the Holy Spirit lead. I'm going to ask you to stand this evening.